A little algebra two. Um, we are going to continue from yesterday's lesson with the polynomial sketches. Happy Friday. And I know that snow has um, fell a lot last night. And technically, we're supposed to have a snow day. But since we're doing this virtually, I'm still going to post this video like I promised you yesterday. And I want you to work on some of the problems that we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to keep it re really, really quick. I'm going to go over some concepts. And that's going to be it. Uh, and quite honestly, it's not anything new. Rather, it's something that you probably have already uh, have done. It's just that now I'm going to reverse the order in which I'm going to give you the graphs for today. And I'm going to ask you to come up with the equation, the uh, possible equation that matches the, um, the graph of the following. So let's just first go over um, the basics. When we do the graphs, from the equations, or if we're gonna do this vice versa, the first thing we always must identify are the zeros. So where are the zeros in this particular question? It's a negative two, one, and positive three. Your, your job is for you to be able to translate that into a factored format. If I have a zero at X equals negative two, that means one of my factor is X plus two. You switch the sign. It's a positive one. So therefore it's gonna be X minus one. Then we're going to have it at x minus 3, and there we go. Now, there's one really key concept here that you must account for. Am I done or not at this case? You have to answer that by using the last component, which is your end behavior slash leading term. Now, the end behavior, it seems to me that it goes up and down like this, where as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching positive infinity, Y is approaching negative infinity, X is approaching positive infinity. So which graph, I mean, which of those four end behaviors make sense with this particular one? We know that it's X to the power of three. I mean, this is gonna give me an odd power function. So let's go back up to our notes from yesterday. So we're looking at the odd one. So here we're looking at this situation number two, and we're looking at this situation number four. Now you see the graph shape. This is not what we're looking for. This is what we're looking for. It's up and down. And look at the leading term. This coefficient is negative. So what does that mean? It means that I need to go back here and then I need to fix my mistake. Let's see here. All I have to do at that particular point in stage is just add a negative sign in the very beginning because that will account for being a negative sign for the leading term. When you multiply a negative sign with all the x's here, Combine them, you're going to get negative x to the power of three. So the final answer would just simply be this. It's just that and nothing else. Okay. Um, I These are just um, odd powered functions here. And so I think the next question, actually, yes. I would like for you guys to pause the video right now and try doing this question on your own. Okay, so because I want to go over the basics for today, I want to just knock these out of the ballpark. So this is a negative five, zero, and three. So if you think about it, it should be uh, x plus five. That should be one of the zeros. Uh, x minus zero, if you wrote it that way. And then x minus three. Now, in generally, we don't really write the x minus zero. We just kind of bring it to the front and say just x, x plus five, x minus three, because x minus zero is still x, right? So there's no need for you to have a parentheses around x. So you can just write it like this. Now the end behaviors is down and up, and it seems like it's an odd power function. So this one, you actually do not need to change any signs. So you just leave it as it is and you move on. There's nothing else that needs to be done. Okay. All right, now let's talk about some even powered functions. So even powered functions and also due to multiplicities, of course, let's talk about the first one here. We have at negative two and at positive three. So I think we can both agree that it's X plus two, X minus three, but you need to understand that it bounces at those two locations. There's twice that it bounces. If it bounces, I have a multiplicity of two. Make sure you have squared on both of those cases. Okay, and then what do we have to do? Well, it turns out that it's both going down. So the this is an even powered function, it's going down. So I'm gonna go back to my notes up here. It's an even powered function, so I'm looking at these two. And if it's both going down, I am looking at situation number three, 
where the sign in the front is just simply negative and your end behaviors, they're both, as you can see, are going down. So I'm gonna go back to this particular slide and just put a negative sign in front of it. It's just that simple. It's really, really easy. There's not much of a math involved. You're going from the graph to write down the equation. Uh, this one, I think you guys can all do on your own. So just pause the video now and then try to see if you can get this. Okay, so the end behavior is the same as the previous one and the zeros is at one and negative five. So I hope you have X minus one, X plus five at negative. Does it matter if I switch, this, um, switch up the order? No, it doesn't. Either one of these two will be fantastic. All right, so now let's tackle on some of the more challenging problems. So for today, I wanna give you guys like more questions that's like, you know, it's, it's like, like this one, right? So determine a possible equation for the given graph. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of squigglies like this, but quite honestly, you don't have to worry about a thing because you all, you're, will always be given these zeros, first of all. Um, you will always be given these end behaviors, and that's pretty much what you need. You have negative three, 0 0.5, assume it's 0 0.5, by the way, and that's a three. Okay, so I have multiplicity at all those three locations. So what am I going to do? I'm going to write x plus three squared, x minus one half squared, or you can write two x minus one squared. Either way, it's going to be fine. And then you're going to write x minus three squared. Now, this will give you an x to the power of six. Yes, it's even powered function, and it's both going up for the end behaviors. So what does that mean? Is that the leading coefficient must be positive. Go back to your notes. It has to be positive in order for those two end behaviors has to both going up. So the end behavior is positive. I mean, I'm not end behaviors. The leading coefficient is positive. So there's nothing for you to change. So just leave it as it is. It's, that's it. Okay. Um, to sum up for today, I want you guys to tackle on questions that looks like this, and then we're going to call it a day. I know I, it's, it's a really quick video, um, but quite honestly, this is all I have at my disposal. And I want you guys to take a look at these two questions very carefully, 11 and 11, 12, and try doing this on your own as much as possible. Assume that this is one point, negative 1 1.5, by the way, and assume that this is zero. And um, write down the equations, please. Okay. So first, let's identify where the zeros are for this question. The zeros are located at negative 1.5. The one is at zero. There's one at two. Now, if I see these two, it seems like there's no multiplicity going on, but there's something fishy happening in the middle. So first, I'm going to write x plus 1.5. You can write it as, x, um, I think it's uh, 2x plus 3. You can write it either way. But most likely, you will prefer to write in the first way. The secondly, that's x minus 0, right? Because the zero happens to zero. And this is x minus two. Now for these, the multiplicity, there's none. So it's just to the first power. But you see that there's a little squiggly thing happening in the middle. The squiggly means that there is multiplicity of three. So to finally write down the answer for this one, we write x to the power of three happening three times for that zero times x plus 1.5 times x minus two or x cubed, 3x plus 2, x minus 2. How, how do I get the 3x plus 2, you might ask? Well, if I'm trying to get, I'm sorry, this 2x plus 3, that's my fault. If I'm trying to find now negative 1.5, like you, all I did was that I just, I just multiplied both of these by two. So multiply this by two, multiply this by two to eliminate the decimals because we don't really like to see decimals in a factor form. So that's how I can do it. But quite honestly, it really depends on how dilated it is. Um, you can just leave it like this and there's, good, there's not gonna be a problem for me. So now at this stage, I want to check to see the last thing we need to check for is the leading term. You gotta check for that. I have an end behavior going up and down, which means it's got to be reversed with the positive. So I have to put a negative sign in front of it to accommodate for the end behaviors and the leading term. Please go back to the notes that I've showed you before with the four end behaviors, and then you, you will know what I'm talking about. If it's a, just a regular positive x to the uh, fifth, because you can see that for this particular question, we have x to the power of three times x times x. That is all x to the power of five. In order for me to 
um, graph that, it should be end behaviors of down and up, but this is since it's up and down, we got to put a negative sign in there. So the final answer should be this. Final question for today, uh, we have one of the zeros at zero, then it's a two, then it's a five. Now the multiplicity happens three times here and multiplicity happens twice here because it bounces off. So we're going to write first X minus zero. We can just relieve it as X. X minus two, X minus five to the power of three to the power of two because the multiplicity there is a squiggly, which is a three. Bounces means two. Now they're both going down and this is an even powered function. Why? X, X cubed, X squared. X times X cubed, X squared is X to the power of six and it's even powered function. So since they're both going down, it means that I also need to have the negative sign in front of it so that the end behaviors are both going down. And that's it, okay? So for today, I'm gonna to give you guys these little hard problems to do. So I'm gonna give you guys the, um, I'm gonna just design my own questions here, of course, um, but most likely I will just give you guys this, this, they're very complicated indeed. This one, uh, this one I'll skip, but I'm gonna give you a total of six questions to do for homework. One of them is a multiple choice and that should be it. Um, have a good weekend and I'll see you next week.